Fallout New Vegas, also known as the best game ever made. In fact, it's so well made, it requires you to install several mods to even get the game working. And even then, it's a 50-50 on if that'll even fix it. Because the intended experience of New Vegas is quick saving every 20 seconds because the game will just randomly fucking crash. Repeatedly. Oh my fucking god! This game has about as much chance of working as my friend does of getting an alpha pack on Siege. To be fair though, this game was made in like 18 months, so that at least makes sense. You'll love this game if you enjoy action RPGs, or if you're a trans woman. And of course, who wouldn't love this game? With great gameplay, top tier writing, deep character customization, and an amazing story that revolves around a random courier deciding the fate of the entire Mojave Desert simply because Chandler from Friends shot him in the head. I wish I was joking, but that's genuinely what the plot of this game is. The main villain for the first half of the story is Benny, played by Matthew Perry, who prepared for the role by tracking down a mailman in the desert and fucking shooting them. But after you get your little revenge shit sorted out, the antagonist can range anywhere from a wannabe dictator to an actual dictator, or even glorified Discord moderators, all depending on what ending you're going for. After watching the opening cutscene and witnessing the first ever long-range brain surgery, you wake up where a doctor has somehow cured you of instantaneous death, and after creating your character, you step foot out into the wasteland where you can meet the many wonderful people of the world. Hey there. And the tutorial teaches you the basics of how to kill wildlife and cooking meth. You can immediately venture out into the world and take out complex and morally challenging quests, such as save the town or alternatively, kill everyone in the town. Now, of course, you're probably asking, but why would I do this? It would be so awesome. It would be so cool simply because you can. And that's a huge part of New Vegas, player choice. Because the majority of quests in this game genuinely give you a lot of choice on how you want to handle each of them. You can play this game as a completely unhinged maniac or the messiah of the wasteland and anything in between. After all, there's a mission where you find a sex robot and yes, you can fuck it. And I'm really unsure of the legality of that, but I am sure of the fact that you can fuck it. For better or worse, the choice is yours. Why in the world did you attack President Kimball? Understandable. And speaking of choice, let me tell you about all the choices you'll make to create your character. Before getting 360 no scoped at the start of the game, you were previously a courier, which meant that you dealt with a lot of mail. And you know who else liked mail? Ted Kaczynski. And now he's dead, just like how you almost were at the start of the game. And at the start of the game is where you use the special system to decide what kind of psychopath you're going to be. Due to how the special system is implemented, Fallout New Vegas is the peak of role playing. Each attribute you can pick from allows you to build your character in your own unique way. The attribute you can pick from are strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck, which all allow you to create the specific character you want. You want a certain build? You can make it. You could be a Chad, an average NFT owner, or even an incel. You want it? It's yours, my friend. And with the addition of perks, you can even become the literal incarnation of death simply by being bisexual. This isn't a bit, by the way. I am completely serious. You can even beat the final boss of the game purely by being good at shopping. Until the day when our armies meet again, Courier, I shall wait for you on the battlefield. On top of all of these, you have your skills, which you can put points into every level, which help you improve certain aspects of your characters, and even pass speech checks within the game. And even when you don't have the full skill level yet, you can still attempt the speech check anyway, and the words there are actively different to what you would say once you do have the level for it. So with the difference of a single skill point, you can change from complete fuckwit to slightly less of a fuckwit. As well as sometimes you can get entirely unique playthroughs due to specific levels of attributes or perk choices. For example, if you decided to go the route of playing with the lowest intelligence stat possible, you get some unique interactions that are fucking hilarious to say the least. Sorry son, I fixed up your head as best I knew how. I guess I missed a spot. I can't tell whether you're joking or radiation melted part of your brain, but either way, I don't see a good reason to let you through. Who the hell are you? They bring you in to replace me? They're replacing me, aren't they? Ah, shit, man. You're direct. You're no-nonsense. How am I supposed to compete with that? Or you could possibly max out your luck stat and be so good at gambling that you get blacklisted at all the casinos in town. You look lonely. I can fix that.
Okay, that's that. No more games for you. Go rob the tops. You're done here. Have some drinks. Talk to some dancers. You can also have companions join you on your journey, such as Socially Awkward Powerhouse, Robot Dog, My Wife is Dead, Danny Trejo, Pondering My Orb, Alcoholic Merchant, White Man, and Schizophrenic Grandma. And each of them are uniquely memorable in their own way. Oh, Jimmy, don't you go being silly now. Come over here and give your grandma some sugar. Well, welcome then. I'm Veronica. I live in a hole in the ground. Sorry, boss. But as much as I like to risk getting killed by your side, you seem to already have some help. A courier, doctor, and a cybernetic dog. After we deal with the whole imminent conquest of New Vegas problem, we should open an act at the tops. Nobody's dick's that long. Not even Long Dick Johnson, and he had a fucking long dick. Thus the name. The last thing you never see. Pretty accurate. And so are we. Well, thanks for taking a chance on a naive young girl from California with stars in her eyes and a pneumatic gauntlet on her hand. And they each have their own unique perks tied specifically to which one you currently have with you. And each of them having their own quests specific to them, and some even having reactions to certain quests throughout the game. And they all have their own way of assisting you in combat. And speaking of, I should probably talk about the combat considering I'm this far into the video and have barely mentioned it. While it's not the best combat system ever made, it's still pretty solid. Despite being a bit dated by modern standards, the combat still holds up. Each weapon feels effective and there's a lot of variety in terms of builds based around each weapon type. But having said that, there's definitely times where it feels like you're shooting at a cardboard box. But thankfully, those cardboard boxes have legs and I'm going to fucking break them. Fallout New Vegas, just like every Fallout game, has a system based around individual limbs. Repeatedly damaging an enemy's legs, arms, body, head, or even their weapon enough times and you'll cripple them, resulting in different disadvantages. Crippling one or both of the legs will slow down movement, crippling arms will reduce accuracy and damage, and so forth. So if you hit your shots right, well, let me tell you. This is where the fun begins. But also, do keep in mind, any of these effects can and will happen to you as well. Don't worry though, there are ways to fix any injuries that you may sustain. And trust me, you're gonna wanna make use of this system, especially when you run into something like this. And if you have game journalists aim, don't worry, the VAT system has you covered. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? With the press of a single button, you can pause the game and take aim at enemy specific limbs, and the game will shoot for you instead of you having to aim manually. However, whether you hit or not is down to a percentage, which can change depending on distance, visibility, and combat skill. And above the percentage to hit, there's a bar that shows how much health the specific limb you're targeting has left, which will appear empty when you've successfully performed the world's first long-range amputation. Also, if you use explosives or melee weapons, you instead target the enemy as a whole rather than the individual limbs, which makes sense considering tossing a grenade at someone tends to end every fight looking like this. And depending on who you decide to make your victims, combat can even affect your standing with certain groups within the world as well. Factions in this game include Missionary Sex, Fascism Allegory, Walt Disney, and fuck all of you, I'ma do my own thing. And of course, there is a right answer, but more importantly, there is definitely a very fucking wrong one. And joining any of these factions can affect the ending of the game in a number of ways. You can either join the warring factions of the NCR or the Legion, or even join up with what is essentially a shut-in wannabe dictator who owns a sex robot, or you can do your own thing and tell them all to get fucked. What the hell? No, get away from you, goddamn TV on wheels. I like it, Kudgy. Because why go with any of these dickheads or fuck everything up when you can fuck everything up yourself? Depending on which faction you side with, the ending will show what happens to the world afterwards and is further affected by your karma rating, which is also loosely tied into the reputation system. The reputation within Fallout New Vegas is pretty interesting. On the surface, it looks simple. You help out a group, they like you. You commit borderline war crimes against them, they like you a little less. Which I think is a bit rude, because I just wanted to test out my new gun. It's not my fault a civilian was right there when I did it. But under the surface, things get a bit more complex. If you initially help a group, you'll have a good reputation with them. But if you at any point turn around and do something like this, 
they tend to get a little upset. Not to the point of hating you though, and that's where things get interesting. Normally, if you do bad things towards a group from the get-go, they'll just hate you completely. However, if you initially had a good reputation with them, their feelings are a bit more mixed. They acknowledge that at some point you did good deeds for them, but they also acknowledge that you kind of went sicko mode on them. All of this can lead to groups outright attacking you or giving you bonuses depending on where you stand with them. The bonus being that they don't shoot you on fucking sight. All in all, Fallout New Vegas is an incredible, albeit unstable, experience from start to finish. With incredible characters, writing, and gameplay, this is genuinely one of my favorite games ever, and there's a reason people still praise it to this day. I didn't mention any of the DLCs throughout the video, but each of them are absolutely worth getting and playing through alongside the countless hours you can spend in the main game. So if you enjoy action RPGs or incredibly well-written games, you absolutely should play this game. After all, a good game can change your life. Final score, 11 mods installed on my computer out of 10. And they still didn't fix the fucking game. I just, I... Marcel, where are you going with that disc? You are not putting that on again. Marcel, okay, if you press that button, you are in very, very big trouble.